Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your armchair warrior with my two cents perspective on current affairs. In this video I would like to talk with you about what women want. Because I figured it out, I know now, I am 55, it took me a while but finally I discovered it. And I am going to share my insight with you. I'll tell you right away, women want what men have. Really, it is that simple. Women want what men can provide. And this could be money, status, repairing the sink, sex, children, you name it. When a guy has it, or can deliver it, a woman wants it. I will explain myself in detail, but first we will have to go back in time to understand where we are right now. Up till, let's say, a hundred years ago, before there was any reliable birth control, that means like almost the entire history of mankind, the situation has been like this. When a girl becomes sexually mature and she has sex, there was a tremendous risk or chance, if you prefer that, that she would get pregnant. Basically, having sex meant getting children. And getting children meant you are occupied, you can no longer provide for or protect yourself. As a woman, you would want a man that can provide a house, income, protection, safety, etc. You would want to find a good man that would be able to protect you against the dangers from the outside world, such as bad weather, animals, or bad men, etc. As a good father, you would have to take care of your daughter until she found a reliable partner. You definitely did not want some crazy man to knock your daughter up and then you yourself would have to take care of her and the children for the rest of your life. The man would have to provide and protect against other men, the family would protect against other families, the tribe would protect against other tribes and so on. So men and their communities who would be able to provide and protect would have the best chance to produce great offspring that would be able to survive, learn from their parents and also produce offspring themselves. Parents and communities that are able to teach their children well how to survive and thrive would do better than those who didn't. Women and children of men who would not be able to provide and protect would have large risks to have their offspring die from hunger, diseases or getting killed by rival tribes or taken as slaves, you name it. That means the non-providing and protecting males slowly die out. The providing and protecting males or communities have more offspring. That is called natural selection. And that means it is wired into the male brain to provide and protect because during the entire history of mankind there was a positive selection on these traits. It doesn't matter if you are religious or believe in evolution or both. You can either say God designed man to protect and provide or you can say that it was natural selection on man to protect and provide because they could produce more offspring that would be able to survive. And thus, it is in the nature of man to give women, or at least one woman, what she wants to keep her happy, so the family is happy. Now, have a look outside. Everything you see has been built by man. The house you are in, the computer or cell phone you are on, the electricity in your house, the water system, roads, cars, businesses, trade, economy, you name it. Everything, with a couple of minor exceptions, has been invented, constructed and built by man. Why? The answer is because women want it. Women want what man can provide. If children would grow on trees and men would be able to reproduce without women, if there would be no women at all, we would not have what we have right now. We would not be where we are right now. We would not have gotten to the moon and things like that. Why not? Because women drive us to perfection. 
Without women, men would create a comfortable environment for themselves to survive, and they would drink beer, tell jokes, play games all day, such as camel races and football, and that would be it. It's women that drives us to outperform ourselves. Women make men excel. Because women want the best a man can give and the best man that can provide. A stronger man with more assets is more desirable than a guy who can barely take care of himself. And thus, to impress the most beautiful and attractive woman, men become incredibly competitive towards each other. They want to outperform the others. They want to be winners and thus they strive for the best. Without women, men would not have been able to excel as much as we did. We might still be living in huts or even tents. So, men invented universities. Men developed writing, alphabets, and later printing press. Men stored the knowledge that they gathered in libraries. And when this knowledge extended, they divided them into disciplines such as biology, astronomy, math, physics, you name it. And then man invented universities where topics could be discussed, knowledge could be discovered, acquired and passed on to the next generation. Discoveries that took a lifetime to figure out could now be learned and understood in a couple of hours. Man invented politics. In the beginning, a man would protect his house against another man. The family would protect the family against other families. A tribe would protect against another tribe. And when the population became larger and larger, kings would reign and form armies to protect against other countries. And at some point, the population became so large that kings were not acceptable anymore as a good representation of the entire population. So man invented a political system called democracy with parties that could represent the interests of certain groups within society, where men could vote for their candidates. Since man invented it, only men could vote. As such, men have been able to build Western civilization as we know it. And as always, when men have something, women want it. So women said, we want to vote too. Why can man only vote? And since it is in the nature of man to provide and give women what they want, they said, well, okay, why not? You can vote. And we want to be educated too. Okay, sure, no problem. And we want to have jobs and careers just like you. Okay, okay, uh, you go ahead, get the jobs. And we want to be in your political system too, because why should you only decide for us? Okay, be my guest, enter our arena. And thus it happened. But the thing is this, when women entered universities, they entered a domain that was entirely created by men. And that meant we educated women to think, act, talk, discuss and be like men. When women entered male-dominated companies, they had to think, act and perform as males to survive in that environment. When women entered the political system, they had to become like dominant, competitive men to be able to get a point across. And as such, we as Western societies have educated an entire generation of women to become man-like. We emphasized and enhanced all the male-like aspect in these educated women. Let's call them alpha women. This had, as you may understand, a huge effect. First, because we teach women to be man-like, many women lost their femininity. They became fighters just like men are. They became competitive like men are. They became dominant like men are. And as it turns out, a lot of men do not actually like women who are like that. Second, marriage, or to put it like this, the long-term romantic relationship between a man and a woman with the right constitution to produce offspring that is able to survive and thrive, came under pressure 
because all of a sudden there are two captains on a ship with the female part behaving like a half man. To be honest, that turned out to be a recipe for disaster for long-term relationships. Third, because women want to get an education and some kind of career, they party on during their 20s and only start looking to settle down with a suitable long-term partner when they reach their 30s, only to find out there are not that many suitable guys left for them to provide what they want more. Because they have already acquired themselves what they wanted in job, career and income. It is in the nature of women to look for a protector and provider, so if they already have a lot for themselves, they in general still want a guy who has more than they already have. But the problem is that there are not many guys like that out there. Now they all want the top 1% high scoring guys, not the plumber. Fourth. Some women, of course, were not happy with these male-constructed entities and wanted to reform them by having female teachers, professors, board members, by changing the curriculum, the content of the lessons, its structure, and more and more like that. Now we are getting a generation of men that are being raised and educated by single moms, female teachers, and feminist professors on the universities. And just like the women who were educated by men became manlike, these men who are extensively being educated by women and feminists are becoming more and more like women. Let's call them beta males. Now we have ended up in a position where it looks like women are asking too much from men. Now that they got almost everything that men had created, they still want more. They are overcharging men and men start to bail out. So let's go back a hundred years again and before that. What did good men want from a woman? Bad men only want sex from a woman and for the rest they want nothing. Men do not really need women to survive or thrive. They can perfectly take care of themselves. They can provide food, money, safety, comfort, everything you need to live but they can't have sex without a woman, or at least it's not as much fun. You know this saying, men only want one thing, women want everything. But that's not entirely true, of course. It's more like bad men only want one thing, bad women want everything. Good men want a lot more from a woman. They want companionship, coziness, good conversations, understanding, love, beauty, joy, and all these things. But there is one more very important thing. A good man wants to provide and protect, but in return he wants his good woman to respect him and be proud of what he is doing and providing. A guy up till a hundred years ago, and that means through the entire history of mankind and still in the largest parts of the whole world, wanted a woman to be proud of him. And the pride of his woman would motivate him to go through great lengths for her and his family. But now that women can take care of themselves and are independent, there is nothing for women to be proud of anymore in a man. By taking over, women took the pride away from men, and men are losing interest. You already got it. You already have what you wanted to have. But now you got it without a man. You got it for yourself. You can provide for yourself now. You can buy your own house. You can live your own life. You are smart now. You can vote. You can argue. You debate. You are educated. You are grown up now. You got it all. What more do you want? Well, women still need a man to get impregnated, but where is the glory in that, if that's all? And that's how we get to the fifth point. A lot of guys are bailing out from the never-ending and ever-increasing demands of women, and they are going MGTOW, men going their own way. Women already took it all from men. 
There is nothing left that women can take out of guys anymore that make them feel proud of providing it. Men have been reduced to ATMs. The whole male-female relationship has become corrupted like this because all those extra layers that made a lifelong relationship worthwhile for both parties have been stripped away from it and the only thing that remains is a cold calculated exchange of the most primitive needs of both sexes and that is guys are looking for sex, women are looking for money. With the risk of getting pregnant largely being eliminated, men have been able to freely get that sex without any obligations. And women, stupidly enough, are granting them this free access, but always in the hope that then they would be able to convince the guy into committing to them. Commitment is just another way of saying that the guy has to provide on the long term, of course. More and more women are getting fed up with the pump and dump attitude of men. Because of course, a lot may go wrong like this. Just to mention something, even if the woman agreed to have sex, she still may feel used if she got dumped afterwards. And in the worst case, guys may not even bother to go through the trouble of some basic courtship and getting consent and they more or less, depending on the amount of alcohol involved, just take the sex they want. Which may result in rape allegations. Or powerful dominant men use their influence to get ignorant women sexually involved with them, etc. We know all about this. Of course women rise up against this. Hashtag me too. Now we are at a point where getting involved with women has become very risky for men. Telling a woman that she is attractive can already be considered as objectifying a woman and thus sexual harassment. A man may easily get a false rape accusation where he risks his career and good name being destroyed. There is a chance the woman did not use birth control to get pregnant without the consent of the guy just to get children. A lot of women are just gold diggers. Getting married has an incredibly high risk of ending up in a divorce. The guy may easily lose custody over his children in court. He still has to pay for child support, etc. Men feel used. Women already got everything from men what they wanted. In return, men got free access to sex without obligations. Women now feel used too. What is the solution to this? Should we entirely hand over society to the feminists to create a matriarchy and say, there you go, have fun, and men going their own way, watch from a distance to see what happens? Nah, this only happens successfully in movies. It's going to be a disaster. Women cannot even survive together on an island without men. How are we going to give them control of the incredibly complex society that men invented and built and basically are still running? Are we going to completely separate the sexes so women cannot be sexually harassed anymore and men can happily go their own way? Where single mothers can get impregnated from sperm banks while the government provides them the income they need from the taxes MGTOW have to pay. Ouch. Or should we just go back to our roots, maybe? Like it has been throughout the entire history of mankind. Which has proven to be the biggest success of our species. That is, where one sexually not active young woman going her own way meets another sexually not active young man going his own way and they both decide, with the consent and the blessing of their parents and their community, to mingle and bond and build an emotionally strong and exclusive lasting sexual relationship in which both will contribute according to their individual possibilities and strengths to create the safest possible environment for their children to grow up in. Far-fetched? No, not at all. Don't worry. Because in the end it will be as simple as this. 
all people who fail to reproduce children well, that will be able to reproduce children well, will eventually die out. And those that are able to unlock the not even that difficult ancient formula through which humanity was able to reach its current worldwide spread, those will last. Even if Western societies eventually would die out from the cancer it has gotten from within, those small, rough, stubborn cells called families that have been able to unlock the holy secret that can exist between one man and one woman will eventually form the backbone of a new generation that will survive, at least if they haven't all been killed by the matriarchy out of jealousy, of course. Okay, folks, thanks for listening. Please like, subscribe and leave your comments and see you soon.